Hello everyone, it is Monday and that is one of the two days a week when I always post a draft video. Lately, if you're a recent subscriber or whatever, you may have seen me posting a draft like every single day. Unfortunately, that's not the norm. <laughs> the norm is at least two. Sometimes I get in three and sometimes I have enough time to do a bunch of them, which I did recently. And that was a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed Masters 25 as a format. Um, there's lots of cool stuff you can do. And it's, it's just like a traditional old school. It really feels like what it's supposed to feel like, like a representation of 25 years of magic. It's an old school draft where, you know, there aren't really super obvious, clearly delineated archetypes, which is a nice break from what we've had, you know, in like Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan and Kaladesh and everything before that. And uh, there's lots of really cool iconic cards in it. Um, I know a lot of people are disappointed in this set in terms of its value when you buy a booster box, though. You know, my kind of take on that, and this, I know I think it's an unpopular one, is like, why would you expect to actually make money by buying a booster box? But anyway, um, <laughs> the point is, uh, this limited format is excellent uh, for all the problems. You know, Tree of Redemption, I agree. Like, why? Why is Tree of Redemption? It's not even good. And I mean, it's okay card in limited. I don't know why they printed it, though. It doesn't combo with anything. Should have at least printed the Black Mythic Tree, but they, but they didn't. Okay, so... Epic Confrontation is a good removal spell. Murder of Crows is an excellent creature. Those are our two primary choices here, I think. You know, Diabolic Edict and Disfigure are both fine, but I don't think of either of them as, like, excellent, excellent removal. Uh, Disfigure is a lot, is better than Diabolic Edict, though. It, it could maybe be in this conversation, but Murder of Crows is just so good. Like, as an uncommon, it's one of the most powerful creatures in the air, in the set, and the looting it gives you is insane. An Epic Confrontation is nice. By the way, this is a, uh, a um, Phantom Draft, so that's why I'm not talking about Reshot and Port at all. Uh, I think we take Murder of Crows here, though. I do like the card a lot, to be fair. Um, but, yeah, I think we take it over the Confrontation or the Disfigure. The confrontation, I think, is premium as far as green goes, but it is. You got to fit it in the right window or you can get completely wrecked. So Murder of Crows it is. So Blood Moon, wow, Ravenous Chupacabra, what was in this pack? <laughs> That's, you know, we have this right now in Rivals of Ixalan too, um, and it's insane there. This set is much more powerful than Rivals of Ixalan, and guess what, Ravenous Chupacabra is still insane. Still perhaps the best uncommon. It's definitely the best black uncommon, or common. Um, yeah, we take it over all these other things. There's some blue cards here, but they're nothing special. The Chupacabra is easily the best card in this pack. Easily. Um, murder? Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll take more removal. Murder, Chupacabra, Murder of Crows. Murder, murder, murder. Um, okay, Epic Confrontations here, which is worth looking at. Unfortunately, I mean, Mystic Snake is one of my favorite cards. I got to pick the draft it in my very first draft of the format, which was really fun. Uh, but uh, splashing it isn't great because you want to be able to cast it at basically all times um we do have epic confrontation and we also have kindle i kind of think it's between them we could take a blue card like brainstorm or totally lost but i i think kindle and epic confrontation are so much better um people in the comments recently were talking about how i, I took cards that weren't on a color that i was already in um and how they thought i should have just kept taking the colors that i was sort of looking at but when the cards are this much better uh epic confrontation and kindle are just so much better than Brainstorm are totally lost, or Erg Raiders or Supernatural Stamina. Even though the Stamina is great with Chupacabra, I think I take the Confrontation. Um, yeah, I mean, things aren't going super well. Um, so Freed from the Real is sort of a pseudo-removal spell that you can also do some combos with, which is fun. Picking up our first Accumulated Knowledge isn't a bad plan. Uh, the green cards here aren't great. I think the best card in this pack is probably Hordling Outburst. But here, I think, you know, Hordling Outburst is good, but I think I take a blue card. Um, and I think I take the first Accumulated Knowledge and see if we can accumulate enough of these. Okay. So, Ruthless Ripper is good. Return to Phalanx isn't bad. Mystic the Hidden Way is solid. I think we take this figure here, though. We did pass one earlier, but I think this figure is better than these things, which are all fine playables. I like seeing them all here because it means black and blue are a little more open, and those other packs are perhaps just light on it. 
So accumulated knowledge number two. Yeah, I think that's where we go here. I mean, um, arcane denials. I, I cited in. I've never mainboarded one, but it is a good sideboard card. Relentless rats. I think is sort of a trap. It's just hard. They're just they're just so mediocre unless you get like six. Whereas accumulated knowledge, you can play if you have two of them, and you're really ecstatic if you have like six. Whereas this is just like playable if you have six. Um, so accumulated knowledge it is. And I don't like borrowing 100,000 arrows at all. I'm not sure anybody does. So here's some more red stuff. There's also a stamina. Um, you know, it is good with our Chupacabra. Totally Lost is a fine little bounce build. It's a little clunky, but there are other cards in both blue and black that the stamina combos with, and it is a good trick. Of course, right now we have two creatures. Um, we may or may not get more. I do like the Outburst, but I think here we are again, you know, even though I think Outburst is better than the than the black or the blue card here, I think we're going to take the black card in this case. Okay, so green's fairly open, though none of these cards are super exciting. We could have had so many Hordling Outbursts. Should we think about jumping into red? Is it worth it? Because Hordling Outbursts are just going around like crazy. Chances are someone else has already done that. So I, I think we take the Diabolic Edict, which is perfectly playable, but... Certainly not exciting. Uh, yeah, we'll take Death's Head Buzzard here. Also not terrible with Supernatural Stamina. Especially against a deck that has a bunch of um, X1s. So, our black cards look great. Our blue ones, other than Murder of Crows, aren't awesome. But if we can get, you know, four or five accumulated knowledges. I think we could jump into red if we keep seeing it flowing the way it was in that pack. But for now... Um, I think we're blue-black. I do draft blue a lot in this format, don't I? It's because I love, like, Murder of Crows. So, I don't like Dark Ritual at all. I mean, there's just not enough cool things you can do with it. You know, you don't really want to play Chupacabra on turn two. There's no reason to. Turn one, Death's Head Buzzard? Really? Like, eh. <laughs> it's not that exciting. Um, I think I take the Thresher Lizard here, actually. Just to see, you know, because we've seen so much red flowing. So, if it's open enough... That Thresher Lizard probably makes the cut in our deck. It might not, but it's more likely than some other things. So Erg Raiders is definitely more of an aggressive card. St another Stamina. I mean, we could take it and really start taking cards that go well with it. I think that's a good idea. We could just be an aggressive deck and take Erg Raiders, though. Yeah, what the hell? We'll take Erg Raiders. We weren't super likely to play a second copy of... Um, yeah, whatever it was, I forgot, uh, Supernatural Stamina anyway. Unearth, sure, we'll cut the black card just to send a message. And I'm pretty happy that this came all the way back around, I can tell you that. Definitely not, doesn't go well with Erg Raiders. <laughs> They're two completely different goals in mind. And, you know, same with Willow the Wisp, I, it's certainly playable. Um, so getting it super late, but they're both very defensive cards. So, we'll see. Kindle, Kindle. Ooh, Coalition Relic. Coalition Relic opens up Easy Splashing. It opens up Ramping. I think I take it over a third Accumulated Knowledge or a Return Phalanx. Um, or like a Quicksilver Dagger we try to splash or something. Yeah, we'll take the Coalition Relic here. We don't have anything great to splash right now, but just opening it up is great. And, you know, Ramping is always great. So let's splash a Chroma. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not easy to splash her, even when you have Coalition Relic, which can give you two of one color. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, this pack's not good. We could take a Crab, and, you know, that increases the value of cards like uh, Retraction Helix and stuff. Could just take Coral Helm Guide, which is fine. It makes your guys unblockable late. Jalira is not great. Vampire Lacerator, not for us, I don't think. I think I'll take the Crab. Mm. Crab has a lot more upside than the Coral Helm Guide does, but the Coral Helm Guide has a much higher floor. Like, we won't play the Crab unless we pick up some combos with it, basically. So, but I think we take it. Like, if quick, we can now splash combos that go with Coalition Relic, and that's pretty nice. Um, so I do love Pillory of the Sleepless, speaking of splashing. Mesmeric Fiend's pretty good, though. Um, 
but I think Pillar is just better. And we have a Coalition Relic, so splashing isn't asking something insane. Um, you know, Shoreline Ranger, Coral Helm Guide, they're both fine. I, I mean, this is a case where like maybe I should just stay on color. We do already have a ton of removal, right? Yeah, I think I just convinced myself to take the Mesmeric Fiend instead. Yeah, let's do it. I love disrupting my opponent early, uh, so... Ooh, Twisted Abomination, I think we take over Accumulated Knowledge number three. It's an actual... It's a much scarier win condition than Shoreline Ranger, and it has Swamp Cycling, which is nice. So we'll take it. Yeah, I would like Accumulated Knowledge number three, or Shoreline Ranger two, but... Uh, there's also an Ash Barrens for basic land cycling, which could allow us to splash even more, but I don't think that's what we want to do. So Ghost Ship's good. Coral, I mean, it's fine anyway. Ruthless Ripper's fine. But I think maybe we want Accumulated Knowledge number three. If any of those other ones wheel, we can get a ridiculous number of Accumulated Knowledges. So I think I take it. Uh, we're not giving up anything incredibly powerful here or anything. So, no. Nah. We've seen a lot. We've passed two other ones, and if even one of those comes back, I mean, we're already at three, which is good, but if, if they keep coming, we're going to be in pretty good shape as a control deck. So Death's Head Buzzer does not combo well with Will-O-The-Wisp, or Mesmeric Fiend, it's worth noting. Another Supernatural Stamina. Curiosity. Nah. I mean, I like Iron Shaman. <laughs> I think it's the best card in this pack. Another Erg Raiders if we want to be aggressive. So, so we don't have any other things that combo really with stamina still other than our Chupacabra. Though it is, that is a savage one to be fair. Um, but maybe I take the on color card here just because we're not going to splash Iron Shaman. I mean it is the better card. But we'll take another Supernatural Stamina. Okay here we'll take Ghost Ship. What does Unearth get us back right now? Death's Head Buzzard, Return Phalanx, Mesmeric Fiend. It's not terrible. Will we get another accumulated knowledge? That is our question. Of course, this is only pack two, so there's a real good chance we get to four or five. Okay, um... Do I like Ripper more than Totally Lost? Probably. I think I do, yeah. We'll stick it here. I like playing it face down more frequently. Sometimes you don't, though. It gives us another defensive creature, and our deck is, you know, it's filled with removal. Several defensive creatures so far, and, you know, the Ghost Ship, potentially, but ideally Murderous Crows. Murder of Crows or Twisted Abomination as our top curve. And you know, I don't know if we're going to play this in the end, just because it kills so many of our creatures. Though, it may be more likely we cut Will-O-The-Wisp than Death's Head Buzzard. Another ghost ship. Uh, I think I like Return Phalanx a little more. It just blocks so well early. It makes Watchful feel so bad. And I've been on that side of it. <laughs> okay, here we'll take a Coral Helm Guide. We don't want Jalira. Nobody wants Jalira. The cycle of legendary uncommons is mostly pretty good. Jalira is just like, why? <laughs> you could build a really silly deck like where you have like a Chroma, a bunch of Hordling outbursts. You, you could have like a bunch of Hordling outbursts, Jalira, and then a bunch of huge creatures basically. And then you know, I guess that's the idea. Uh, and then you you polymorph all your tokens away and get your huge creatures for cheap. We'll take another one of these and uh so another dark ritual. Dizumi Cutthroat is definitely more of an aggressive card. Unearth isn't great in our deck. We'll take the ritual. I mean I don't love it, but there's a chance like maybe we pick up Frexian Obliterator. I don't know. Something crazy happens. Um Isan Shea doesn't suck for the sideboard. We don't want to main board a six mana five five whose text box is irrelevant against, you know, like two thirds of opponents, though. So we have the relic still and nothing to splash. We have horseshoe relic and nothing, horseshoe crab, rather, nothing to do with it. So, 
Yeah, that's where we are. Um, pack's not great for us. Do I like Sift more than Dusk Legion Zealot? Probably. There's also Pact of Negation, which isn't a bad idea. Those cards are a lot worse in Limited than they are in Constructed, though, because just not being able to cast it until you get to 5 mana and then time walking yourself to counter something. It's a lot harder to come out ahead in Limited. There's also another Return Phalanx. Um, I really do like Sift, though. It's like the kind of card that once you're like, you stabilize and you're like, okay, I'm going to cast Sift, and you basically win. So I think I like it a little more than the Zealot here. We've got plenty of good two drops. I do like the Zealot, but... I had to make a choice. Uh, another Ruthless Ripper. A Prophetic Prism, which could help us splash, but what are we splashing? <laughs> so we haven't picked up anything worth splashing. I think we take another Ripper. Yeah, over Choking Tethers. and There is a Retraction Helix, but we got enough you know, removal and interaction that I don't think we need it. Ooh. Now, this is interesting, but there's a Ravenous Chupacabra, so it's not that interesting. Because <laughs> Heavy Arbalest can com combo with Horseshoe Crab. Maybe if I had, like, five Horseshoe Crabs at this point, I would be like, all right, I think you take Heavy Arbalest over Chupacabra. But I'm still not sure that would be right. We definitely take the Chupacabra. It is amazing. I don't think Blightning's worth splashing. Freed from the real, like I said, is sort of like a bad removal spell. Uh, there is a ghost ship, but I think I like Mystic of the Hidden Way a little more as like a win condition. So at this point, I don't think I see us playing Prosh. That's interesting. Interesting. So Coalition Relic could help us cast Prosh. It's tempting, but at the same time... Risky. Uh, we don't have any other fixing. If we had like a basic land cycling card, I'd think about it. So here we have another Disfigure, but also another Twisted Abomination. I think I like the Abomination a little more than Disfigure number two in our deck with already a good amount of removal. Uh. <laughs> I don't want any of this stuff. So Horseshoe Crab and Relic aren't making the cut right now. Dark Ritual's not making the cut. Those are the easy cuts for now. Um, choking Tethers, I guess. Wow. So Phyrexian Ghoul. All these green cards. I think we take the Ghoul. I don't know that it'll make the cut in this deck. We're not exactly built to abuse it. Um, there's another Disfigure, and there's also a Deadly Designs. It is an interesting card because your opponent can control when it pops, but it still destroys two creatures. <laughs> like, they can make it go off when like you have one creature and they have one creature, but you can avoid those situations pretty easily. Do I want Deadly Designs or Disfigure? I think, I think I'm gonna give Deadly Designs a shot here. Okay, we will take Dusk Legion Zealot. There's the Retraction Helix again. Um, I think that's what we take, but... I don't think we play as third Supernatural Stamina, but I'll take it. So... The Ghoul doesn't seem great in our deck. We don't have any real... We didn't ever pick up a fourth accumulated knowledge, but three's good. So I think we cut the Ghoul. Um, Ghost Ship. Don't know if I'm going to play both of those. Um, oh, God. If I'd picked up more Fixing Man, that could have that could have been nice. Um, we'll take another Isan Shade for the sideboard. Against a heavy white deck, it will be pretty hilarious to side in two of those. <laughs> so, see if we can. Um, okay. Diabolic Edict is kind of subpar when it comes to removal. Uh, we only have we have two Ravenous Chupacabras who combo well with Supernatural Stamina. Don't really need Willow Wisp. I think we cut one Supernatural Stamina. There's our second Relentless Rats, right? Maybe? Do we ever take one? I guess not. Yeah. 
So, good old Magic Online. Moving my morphs where I don't want them. I mean, these are the kind of morph that you play pretty frequently face up, but I still put it in the three. I think that's more realistic. So I think we need to run, I mean, we do have two Swamp Cyclers, but I think we still need to run 16, 17 lands, 17 lands, yeah. So maybe we cut one Death's Head Buzzard. They're not great in our deck. They kill Mesmeric Fiend, Dusk Legion Zealot, Coral Helm Guide, Face Up Ruthless Rippers. So may even just cut both of them and just run Ghost Ship over it, which is... A better blocker anyway. And we can side them in against an opponent who's like a Hordling Outburst deck, which we saw like 12 of them. So, um, but yeah, I think this looks like a pretty good deck. Lots of removal. We don't have any like super awesome rare win condition. And we didn't get to use our Relic, which is sad. Um, but, I mean, we could consider running it, but... The ramp it gives us, like our deck isn't that really a ramp deck, like... Four mana is where most of our cards are. We're going to cast this guy like half the time and Swamp Cycle him the other half of the time. So I think I like where we are. Um, the sweetest thing we have is Supernatural Stamina plus Chupacabra, I guess. You know, that that is a messed up thing. It's like a three for one. Um, all right, so this looks like our deck. I'll see you guys in the first match. All right, going into our first match, we would like to play first. I think this is a keep. We've got a kill spell and early uh, accumulated knowledge and, you know, a threat. We can also swamp cycle it if that's what we decide we need to do. I'm not sure that is what we need to do. Um, Chupacabra will be nice. We'll accumulated knowledge at the end of their turn. So they're probably some kind of ramp deck. This can also help you fix, potentially. Um, but since it makes you get two lands of the same type... If you're really just playing it for fixing, it's actually not that great unless you're like a heavy, heavy into three colors is when it gets good. All right, we drew another land and another land. Leave man up for murder here. I think we probably just hold on to the abomination and are ready to play it as a threat. Um, yeah. So, I don't really feel like murdering that. In black-green, there aren't... I mean, it could be a Loxodon or something, but I can wait on that for a while. I could play the Chupacabra on it. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, with Supernatural Stamina in my hand as well, I can probably afford to do it. And then later in the game, I can Supernatural Stamina. Okay. So, they are going to do two to us, and they have Isan Shade in their hand. I don't know why one would want to mainboard that. I mean, granted, if I were playing white right now, it'd be like, crap, but we're not. So <laughs> so if we can leave up mana for Supernatural Stamina going forward, it's going to be pretty brutal on our opponent. Like, if, if we can block a two, uh, four toughness creature, cast Stamina, like, that's pretty it's pretty nasty. Um, more lands. We're just going to return... Hold on to our murder. Next turn we can play the Abomination. So if they don't have two creatures in play, um, blocking and using Supernatural Stamina is kind of pointless. Okay. Works for me. Okay, Murder of Crows. You'd have been nice last turn. Um, I think I'm going to play it just so I can leave up mana for... Murder. <laughs> I mean, uh, not murder. Supernatural stamina. Um, so we'll play the murder of crows here. They will crack their landscape. This is when we see if they're splashing or just ramping. So they use it to just get one planes. So it's kind of like a really crappy Evolving Wilds. <laughs> the nice thing is though, you can, you know, it has upside over Evolving Wilds. If you need two, two swamps or two forests or whatever, you can do that. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay. Kavu Predator. I'm going to get to loot if I block and use Supernatural Stamina. So that is tempting, but it doesn't look like they're going to attack. So. so 
we go to 17. We play Twisted Abomination. So they probably have some combos with Kabu Predator, it's worth noting. They may have one now, but it's probably not like an instant kill combo, but it could be like Swords to Plowshares or something. Sound Shade, okay. Cool with me, man. Now attack. <laughs> Come on. So we go to 16. Feels good. Okay, we're just gonna cast an accumulated knowledge now. Okay. Um, I like the idea of finding out what's in their hand, but at the same time, I don't really want to tap down black mana when we can do so much with it right now. Uh, between regeneration and supernatural stamina. So, um, I think I end my turn. They could have swords to plowshares. Yeah, I shouldn't have tapped black when I tapped played accumulated knowledge because I have plenty of blue and not enough black right now. Yeah, I'll end her turn. So, Wooly Loxodon is a real possibility right here. Especially if they attack. And they do. Okay. Um, interesting. So, I'm actually not going to block this. Since it is most likely a Wooly Loxodon. Um, if they want to dump their man into that to do four additional damage to us, I think we're okay with that. And we can regenerate our abomination here. Unless they cast giant growth. Well, never mind. The regeneration will still work. Their creature's just alive instead of dead. So at least there's that. At least it's alive. We go to nine. We are rapidly losing life. Um, I think we go with Mesmeric Fiend here and see what they got left. Darn. Okay. Um, do I attack with Chupacabra here? I don't think so. I think we play our Coral Helm Guide, though. We're going to have to get aggressive at some point since the Pillory is slowly killing us, but... Okay, well, they don't have anything else in their hand right now, so that is good. They Will they attack us? All right, so I'm just gonna block and regenerate. Okay. We go to eight. Hey, another swamp. That's nice. Okay. So, let's attack with our abomination. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe? Yes. That way, I mean, I have chump blockers who can help me loot. And this way, I can start, like, putting our opponent on a clock. I'm going to hold on to murder in case they draw another trick or something and we can really get some value out of it. I guess blocking and using supernatural stamina on this is, is pretty solid, but... Okay, so here is when I think we finally get to do this. And we'll also chump block this guy. Um, uh, crap. <laughs> kind of have to chump block both of them. Because Supernatural Stamina will kick in too late, so we'll chump block them both. If they try to use a trick here, we can mur use Murder, so... Okay, um... 
we'll use Supernatural Stamina on Ravenous Chupacabra. Okay, so... Look at all that. That's gonna be fun. We get the card back, we get to loot a bunch. Oop. Of course, we don't have a land in our hand, so which we probably should have kept, but we're still gonna draw a card with it. Ooh, yeah, we'll discard Sift. Maybe we stop, because there's not much we're gonna keep over murder. <laughs> we need that murder. And then we kill this. All right, well, that was effective. Um, okay. We go to seven. Okay. We attack with both of these. I'm gonna play this returned phalanx. So, we don't know what they have in their hand right now. I'm trying to decide if I would just chump block if that's what it came to. Okay, well, get out of here. And that's why we wanted to keep murder. We should have been keeping basic lands. Oh, yep, we got there. The, that turn with the supernatural stamina turned things around like completely for us. We were behind for a while, and then it was like, just kidding. <laughs> Chupacabra time. Um, we could bring in one of our Isan shades. Um, they are hard to cast. But that protection from white, I mean, Pillory of the Sleepless couldn't hit it, for example. But these guys are probably still just better, although Pillory does shut them down. Yeah. Their deck wasn't, like, all white, you know. We didn't see that many white creatures. We mostly saw... I mean, we saw some, but... Yeah, I don't know. If we go to game three, uh, maybe I'll consider it a little more seriously when we know a little more about their deck. Just Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Isan Shade on turn one. That would be pretty... <laughs> Against an opponent where most of the removal is white, that would basically be game over, but you can't really guarantee that's uh, what's going on. All right, this probably isn't a hand that we want to keep. Um because we don't have any black and three of the cards in our hand require triple black, <laughs> double black, excuse me. Oh, okay. I do think we keep this one. Um, put that on the bottom though. We really have to not draw lands. Can I just scry every turn? Okay, that's gonna help later anyway. We don't need it for swamp cycling, but it was a big part of what kept us alive in that last game. Ooh, nice. Here we go. Keep drawing spells. We can do it. Particularly permanence would be nice. Non-land ones. Let's morph. Um, okay. So I'm going to play this land. And I think we attack. If they want to trade a morph for their morph. I'm cool with it. If they don't, also cool with that. Like, if that's Ruthless Ripper, by all means, block our Coral Helm Guide. <laughs> and if it's Woolly Loxodon, they can't flip it, so. Another morph. We take two. Ooh, 
this figure is nice. We're going to attack again with Coral Helm Guide. Drop them to 16. I think we probably use Disfigure next turn, and this turn we just cast Ghost Ship. So yeah, we can use this figure. I mean, the problem is like, which of these is a Loxodon and which of them is a um, Ruthless Ripper? That's the question. Okay, well, it's not that one. <laughs> we know that much. Oh, how I wish I had man up for disfigure. Okay. So I think we just figure the face down one. Ow. Could still be a Ruthless Ripper, by the way, but um, just in case it's a Loxodon, it is. And then we'll end our turn. Ooh, <laughs> I see. Ooh, that's really not good. Ranker. Okay, we need some of our removal and we need it now. Just chupacabra off the top. Hmm. Um. I guess I'm going to play the Murder of Crows because... I don't know. But that's what we're going to play. <laughs> if they get like a planes here and play a pillory, we're dead basically. It can prevent a little more damage when it blocks a creature with Ranker, but... And I didn't have the mana to leave up regeneration on my Abomination. So, Isan's Shade seems possible, and that would be annoying, especially with Ranker. Ooh, or Caustic Tar. Maybe, that, maybe that's what they're doing. What the heck? That's what I have to say. Um, okay. We're pretty much dead. I guess, what does this do? Three? I guess we can survive one more turn. But we don't have a way of dealing with Caustic Tar, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, so, well, I guess we should force them to do it. Um, I'm sure they will. So, we'll play Twisted Abomination here and in our turn. Gonna have to look at our sideboard, but I doubt we have a way of dealing with something like Caustic, caustic Tar. So, there are four. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so we will attack. I mean, what the hell, you know? Why not? <laughs> yeah, we're dead now for sure. We will just... And that was another Woolly Loxodon. Caustic Tar. I haven't actually seen someone play that one yet. It In a control deck, it can be pretty good. Uh, yeah, no, we don't have any way of dealing with <laughs> with it. Um, we don't even have a, uh, uh, what's it called? Totally lost or something. All right, let's see if game three can go a little better for us. Well, that's not a great start. It's not a terrible one either, though. Have a removal to kill an early morph and a ghost ship. I mean, I guess I keep it. It's it's not terrible. It's another hand, though, where it's like, well, if we don't draw spells, we're in trouble. <laughs> but we'll, we'll draw spells. See, like that. That's a spell. Okay. 
Could we have gotten away with 16 lands with two Swamp Cyclers? Maybe. Okay, that's not bad. Chances are they play a Morph here, and we just I think we just fire off this figure and then cast Ghost Ship on our turn. Let's give us... Or Undead Gladiator. That's a pain. Because he refuses to stay dead in most cases. Um, I think I still fire off this figure on him, though. And then we play our ghost ship. Our ghost ship can block the gladiator all day, but... Interesting. Um, I think we play the ship first. Either way. Perilous Mur. That is an obnoxious little card. Okay, so now I think we play our fiend. And we find out what's going on over there. Interesting. Do you have two disfigures? <laughs> oh my god, they do have two disfigures. <laughs> That's messed up. It's a messed up thing. Okay, well, they're out of gas officially, so there's that. Um, but we're out of a threat, so... <laughs> Oh, of course. Of course that's what happened. Um, I could murder, but they kill this anyway if I do, so it's not worth it. Do I cast murder on this face-down creature? Say knock survivalist. All right, yeah, I think we do. We'll just say see you later. Yeah, that's not good. Lands, lands, lands. They need to draw lands too. Come on. Can we get a sift or an accumulated knowledge at least? <laughs> Makes me feel like I should be running 16. I mean, I did keep a five land hand, it was a dangerous one, but the cards we had in it that weren't lands were pretty good, so I thought it was worth the risk, but... Okay, that's not terrible. We can at least trade with the Perilous Mur. I don't know that we do, actually, but... Yeah, they bring back their Gladiator. That makes sense. They did tap double black for that, and I'm pretty grateful because... They can't recast him this turn, unless they have a Swamp in their hand. They may be planning on cycling him. Do I block the Murr and just go for a trade? I don't th think so. I think it's better to just take one here. I mean, getting the Murr off the table is certainly tempting. Oh, there we go. That's what we were looking for. Um, yes, please. And we'll discard a Swamp. And... I think for now we're going to hold on to Accumulated Knowledge. So here comes the Gladiator. I assume. Yeah. He is going to be a pain to deal with late here until we draw something big enough that it can just block him all day. I think they're just splashing white for pillory, so that's a not enough probably to bring in a sunshade. We'll take another one. Okay. 
Okay. Um, let's cast accumulated knowledge. Okay, and then let's cast Dusk Legion Zealot. All right, well, that's a nice chain there. <laughs> um, I think we kill the Gladiator here and attack uh, with our Morph. That is worth noting. They have to do that on their upkeep every turn, and they do have to give up a card. So, I mean, it's not completely worthless to keep killing him. It's just not as worthwhile as it would be in other scenarios. So, finally getting some damage here. And we'll play this Swamp into our turn. At some point, they're going to stop attacking with this so they can do something gross. But in terms of blocking, they could do something gross, that is. They did not get back their Gladiator. We take one. Crows and Tusker, okay. Interesting. Um, I'm gonna attack with this morph first thing. Then if they give me the opportunity to, I'll just unmorph it and kill their Tusker. Okay, they're just gonna take two. In this case, I think I'm just going to cast Twisted Abomination. And I think I also cast Deadly Designs. Yeah. I have enough mana. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If I draw one more land, I can just fire off Deadly Designs whenever I want to, basically. Um, they can also put counters on it, it's worth noting. Pillory of the freaking Sleepless. Okay. That was a risk there. I think Dusk Legion Zealot's going to jump in front of the Tusker here. Uh oh, another morph. We go to 10. We're going to cast Accumulated Knowledge. Okay. Um, I think I attack with both of these. Man, I wish I had supernatural stamina right now. They probably have giant growth anyway. No? God, if I had supernatural stamina right there, it would have been a beautiful thing, wouldn't it? So we'll play Ghost Ship. And yeah, so we should be able to put plot counters on this at the end of their turn. And then fin you know, finish putting plot counters on it on our turn. So I'm going to have to chump block that Tusker with my Phalanx, I think. Could always blow up my own Twisted Abomination to get rid of that Pillory. <laughs> it's hardly worth it, though. Arbor Elf. Okay, so we're going to go put a plot counter, put a plot counter, we go to eight, um, plot counter, plot counter, I'm not going to leave regeneration up, but and plot counter. And then I think we kill this and this.
Okay. Um, and we'll attack for four. I'm hoping they're out of gas here. And we'll play our Phalanx. You finally gonna stop attacking? <laughs> yep, they did. Okay, um, so we lose our morph. It's the only thing they can kill with that perilous morph. So I think I'm actually going to turn it face up for its morph cost. Reveal ravenous chupacabra. Drop them to eight, and then play. We're gonna leave regeneration up. Oh, yeah, we'll be able to play chupacabra. Kill the mer. So they can kill my ripper. That's basically it. They could kill the chupacabra, actually. And that is what they'll do. Um, we will make this guy attack as though he doesn't have defender and attack for six, meaning ghost ship is lethal next turn. Okay. Well, that's not going to save you. Funny enough, we won both games where we got pilloried, <laughs> which is weird. You know, that's probably not, it's probably usually goes the opposite way, but uh, both times we managed to overcome the pillory and yeah, kill our opponent. So 18 and 11, that will take us to about a 60% win percentage. See if we can stay there. I'll see you guys in the next match. All right, match two. Our hand doesn't have any black mana, but we do have two accumulated knowledges, which I think are enough to make up for that. And all our cards are blue too, at least. So, and then we draw a murder. We do need to get black mana pretty badly, obviously, but uh, we'll get it. They're gonna cycle their horror of the broken lands. So if we go at least two and one here, we will be at 61% and hopefully we, uh, we'll be at at least 60% and I think about 61% and um, play my Coral Helm guide here instead of leaving a mana for the knowledge. And uh, hopefully we can stay there. That's basically my goal in most formats and that I've been successful with it in any format that isn't um, the second one in the Amonkhet uh, time. Because I wasn't very good at that format. <laughs> I think I had a 56% win percentage in the end. Rivals of Ixalan has been extra good for me. I have like a 65-ish. So that is, you know, I, I, I'm super happy to make this trade. I can't even tell you. Because Perilous Mer is a nuisance. It can create two-for-ones way too easily. So yeah, we'll take two here. So do we play Mesmeric Fiend? I think we probably do. Say, hello, let's see what your hand has in it, please. Twisted Abomination and Shoreline Ranger. So, they already have an island, uh, but the Abomination is way scarier than the Ranger because it can regenerate. So I think we take it. And their hand is pretty much devoid of anything that can interact and can do anything uh, <laughs> for a while. So that might be good for us, it, it, of course. Of course, they drew a return phalanx. Okay, um, well, we've been lucky drawing land, so we haven't had to cast these accumulated knowledges, so they'll be pretty good in the future, though. They know we got the, they got that shoreline ranger in their hand. Um, I wonder if they have, like, bolus. I'm trying to think of the other things that are the right mana for to be obnoxious here. Okay, so let's attack with Ghost Ship, and then I think we play another Ghost Ship. And just go to town. We now have Murder Mana, too, because we've been pretty lucky. <laughs> and yeah, we'll leave up. Yeah, we'll, we'll play another Ghost Ship here. Just 
go to town. You know, it's a nice little card. Um, I wonder if it was a rare in the dark. It seems pretty powerful for a creature for those days. Yeah, so we can murder this out of our way. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. We could cast Accumulated Knowledge first, and I guess we do. And then we murder it. And we attack for four in the sky. If they ever draw a kill spell, they're in a weird place where they're like, do I kill this and get back my Twisted Abomination? Or do I have to kill one of these flyers so I don't just like die? And that's, you know, that is a crappy place to be. Because the Abomination can't even block these, so, yeah, you know. Okay, so we're going to Accumulated Knowledge. Ooh. <laughs> that's funny. Probably should have played Nylon there so I could have left up Regeneration. Definitely should have, actually. It's not really a probably. Definitely should have. We'll attack with both ghost ships. Dropping them to 10. Man, they're... They want to mess us up with that phalanx, I guess. We'll go to third... Uh, yeah, third... Uh, 12. 12. That's where we're going. 12. Okay. Um, we're going to attack with both ghost ships. So playing Ruthless Ripper face down seems pretty valuable, like a good way to do the last damage we need to do. Um, next turn, flipping it plus two ghost ships is enough for lethal. So, But I don't think we can do it and play an Abomination. No, we can't. So for now, we're just going to play our own Twisted Abomination and end our turn. All right, we got there. Ghost ships led the way, and Mesmeric Fiend taking that creature away was a pretty nice deal. Okay. Well, not much else we can do. Except draw really well again, because <laughs> that was a big part of, <laughs> unfortunately, our success in that game. We just kept drawing stuff we could play, whereas our initial hand, it was like, we're going to have to cast both of these accumulated knowledges. And we did, but only after we ran out of gas from everything we drew. All right, I think this is worthwhile to keep. Deadly Designs is sort of a late game card because if you play it early, your opponent can set up gross situations where you just blow up your own creatures. Granted, they have to pump a lot of mana into it, but still. Merfolk Looter. That's not good. Player Coral Helm Guide. Looting is so good. Ooh. So is Spike Shot Goblin. We can just kill our poor Coral Helm guide. Okay, double Twisted Abomination. I'm not feeling great about that in the early going here. I may Swamp Cycle one of them. So we're going to attack because this is going to die anyway, most likely, to Spike Shot Goblin. <laughs> so we might as well get in the damage. We could play Deadly Designs now, actually. They have two creatures in play, after all. I think we play it now and just... Maybe we don't put counters on it for a while, but we don't have anything else to do next turn except put counters on it at this point, so. They at least have to pay one red if they want to kill our Coral Helm Guide, but still. Okay, they're going to draw a bunch of cards instead, which makes sense. <laughs> Drawing cards is nice. Might as well attack with your goblin. There's no way you block with it. Ooh, interesting. 
Well, I think we attack first. I mean, there's no way they block, but we, we see if they will. I think the Chupacabra actually kills the looter, believe it or not. Because the looter just makes their draws so much better. So, I, I think we play Chupacabra on their looter. Let them keep that goblin for now. They're both really, really obnoxious early creatures who don't have very high power. Um, but I think the looter's more of a problem than the spike shot goblin. We have X1s, but not a million of them. I mean, yeah, they can kill our Coral Helm guide, but that's okay. Wow, they discarded Treasure Keeper. Aggressive. Next turn, we may just be putting plot counters on this. It doesn't create a funny little mini game, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, I guess it's from one of the commander sets or conspiracy. I can't. I think that that logo is the whatever commander set had Marchesa, the dethrone. Well, actually, that was conspiracy, wasn't it? The dethrone stuff. Yeah, it was. They have so many cards in their hand. We're going to take one. What just happened? Oh, they living deathed. Nice. Well, <laughs> that explains why they discarded the way they did. Um, okay, let's cast this accumulated knowledge. And let's put a plot counter on deadly designs. Living death. I've lost to that card enough in this format. This one wasn't a completely ridiculous usage of it, at least. But the times when I've lost to it, I've gotten, like, nothing back. I'm glad we didn't block that goblin because they would have gotten it back too. <laughs> Get Dusk Legion Zealot, sure. Question is, God, they're drawing a lot of cards. Um, do we put plot counters on Deadly Design the next turn or do we play Twisted Abomination? I actually don't think we play the Abomination until we can regenerate it anyway, but we can sift. Maybe we do that. Um, okay, this is pretty good. We'll discard this island, play this swamp, um, and end our turn. So the Chupacabra is great, obviously. We can put another counter on Deadly Designs at the end of their turn. Again, I think I Chupacabra the Looter. What are they afraid of? There's, yeah, I was gonna say, you probably don't need to be worried. Treasure Keeper's so gross too, because even if I do kill it, they get value, so. What'd they discard? A swamp. Oh joy. Now I th kind of think we have to kill that instead with our Chupacabra. So we have six mana. We could just pop this. But I don't think we do just yet. I think we play our Chupacabra. And then Ruthless Ripper face down. No matter who makes this finally go off, I get to decide what to kill. So provided my opponent has at least two creatures in play, I at least get some value out of that. All right. And we can flip this, of course. Block Treasure Keeper with it and flip it, which isn't great because of the stupid... They get a free spell out of Treasure Keeper, basically. But it's it's not bad.
they are probably reluctant to play anything big because they know the deadly designs, you know, I can just pop it anytime it's my turn, basically. So, all right, so we are going to block Treasure Keeper. And we're going to turn this face up for its morph cost. Reveal Twisted Abomination. Drop our opponent to 10. Now let's see what free spell they get out of this. Are you going to kill our Ruthless Ripper? Damn. I don't know if I would have done that. They do still lose two life, but they do also get a skeleton token. The reason I don't think I would have done that is... Um, just because... They would have gotten a spell out of it and they could have saved Skeletonize for something worse. They could have a bunch more removal in their hand, and that's why they were willing to do it, though. So uh, we're going to cast an Abomination. We revealed the foil one, so we'll play the foil one. And uh, we'll end our turn. We can continue to threaten with Deadly Designs. We can block and regenerate now, too, which is not bad. They only have 13 cards left in their library. That's how many cards they've drawn thanks to this stupid thing. I have milled myself out once in this format. I think that was in a draft I recorded. <laughs> Good times. My deck was just like an awesome control deck with no real win condition, you know? That's what you want. Okay, so we're going to declare the block here. And again, find out what free spell they get. Regenerate Twisted Abomination. Do they kill him in response? No. And what do they get? Shrinks their deck more. Maybe we'll mill them out. Pernicious Deed. That's annoying. The only good news about it is they have cheap permanence in play and we don't. So <laughs> they could use it to blow up our deadly designs, but it would kill all of their creatures and none of mine. So it's an interesting development. It doesn't say they can't be regenerated, does it? No, that also helps. Are they just gonna wipe the board? No, maybe. <laughs> I think they're going to. Damn. Yeah, it takes away our deadly designs. Kills all their creatures, too. And we do have another abomination in our hand, so... And a murder to back it up. That's pretty good. His skeleton. <laughs> yeah, he could have regenerated it. <laughs> Oh, that sucks. All right, yeah, it's easy to overlook. It was a complicated board state. Should we have left up more black? Yeah, almost definitely. <laughs> so we made a mistake there for sure. Um, because if we left up enough black, it wouldn't matter how much removal they have. Now, if they have a second removal spell, they can kill him. They have to two for one themselves, and they do. But that was bad to not leave up more black. Right, well, we got removal. So there's that. I'm gonna take one from this skeleton. We can actually just figure it at some point if we want. I don't think we're at that point though. Horror of the Broken Land. Yeah, we probably murder that. We're gonna hold on to this to bluff that we have more than just, well, 
They don't even know we have the disfigure, but... At this rate, if this is all the damage they can do to us, they die from milling themselves before they kill us. So that would be nice. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. That is not when you want to draw supernatural stamina, I can tell you that much. Imagine if I'd only left up enough black mana. Disfigure plus supernatural uh, stamina. I mean, disfigure plus blocking can kill the abomination, which is nice. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're so dead. I mean, we shouldn't be too surprised, I guess. So... Are we dead, like, no matter what? No, because we can use Disfigure to save ourselves. But... Not by much. Ooh, another Skeleton Eyes. Supernatural Stamina can save him, but he'll come back tapped, so it doesn't matter. All those Skeleton Eyes, man. They were, they were nasty there at the end. Um, yeah, again, we don't really have any good answers for any of that. So Living Death, good to keep in mind that they have that when they make really weird attacks. We made the right choice on that really weird attack, um, luckily. Uh, but, yeah. Of course, the thing about Living Death now is that they can make really weird attacks, and I just gonna take damage more frequently than I would normally so I would like to play first okay I think this is a good keep uh, we got a removal spell two drop three drop four drop assuming we draw another land of some kind so we'll play swamp although the chances we just figure on turn one are minuscule I don't know that there is a one drop in this format where I'm like oh god better cast this figure there are two drops like freaking Merfolk Looter. Merfolk Looter. That's not one of them. <laughs> See if we can get them to do that trade again that they did earlier. It was awesome for us. I doubt it. What? Why do they do that? Am I just like addicted to value so I only ever block with Perilous Mer when I can get a two for one? Am I doing it wrong? But I really feel like that's bad. I mean, in a format filled with morphs, the chances that I just play a two drop, a two toughness creature right here that dies to Perilous Mer is so high. So just taking two from the Coral Helm Guide, and then from then on, I'm gonna have a hard time attacking. Of course, this guy's unblockable, but that's neither here nor there. It's not unblockable yet. So let's attack with our morph. Seems like they don't have their red mana, which we can take some advantage of. We have some creatures and stuff to, of course, murder is still an issue. Island cycling. Yeah, they didn't have their blue either. Treasure keeper. So here, I think we just unmorph this. Oh, I did it. you only cost three to unmorph? I forget that that's all you cost, my man. In that case, we're actually gonna cast Accumulated Knowledge first. Okay, and then we're gonna unmorph him. And attack for five. We are rapidly running out of gas, but we have a pretty quick clock on them. They have to use kill spells. So they're probably setting up a skeletonize, if I had to guess. <laughs> Perilous Murr. All right, well, we can just leave regeneration up and hold up this figure as well and just attack for five here. Draw 
dropping them to eight. It's too bad we couldn't also play something there, but what are you gonna do? We take four. Interesting. Don't give me a land. I know it's going to be a land. Let's be real. Okay, yeah. So they're going to skeletonize our dude. That's kind of what we figured was going to happen. Um, we can play our Abomination, and I guess we do, but not being able to leave up regeneration is kind of scary. But we dropped them to six. Especially with all the removal they have. But I think we do it anyway. Maybe about to meet a skeletonize himself. Oh my god, how many skeletonizes can you run? Okay. Going to five, it's kind of nice. Drawing a card, it's not. So they could still skeletonize him. And I'm guessing that's what's happening, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen so many skeletonizes, okay. Okay, Sift is nice. We gotta draw some some action here. Ooh, and we do. Okay. Um, okay, well we attack with our ghost ship. I think playing Chupacabra is best because we can both kill something and block something. Although if I play the Phalanx, I can also cast Disfigure on something. And it can block well. I think playing the Phalanx is better. I think we stay aggressive here. And we're just going to go ahead and disfigure one of these annoying skeletons before it can regenerate. Kind of have to block Treasure Keeper here. If they have another skeleton eyes, we're just dead. I mean, I guess I don't have to block the Treasure Keeper. I can go to one, and then Chupacabra should open up enough block enough space for me to get in for lethal ah if you're only attacking with those though this is a close one They're making me sweat here late, too. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> okay. That is five damage. I think we just take it. So the problem with taking it, potentially, or definitely, really, is that Perilous Mur, in doing anything, will kill us at that point. I should at least block the skeleton token. That way we can take a hit from Perilous Mer at least. So let's block the skeleton token. Okay, we might be able to get there here if they don't have anything else in their hand that like can destroy our hearts. Oh, murder. Okay, so we're going to play Chupacabra. Kill the blocker. 
turn this into a dude, and it all comes down to whether or not we're actually allowed to kill the attack here. Oh, we got there. That was <laughs> that was that was a close one, but we did it. We did it. I'm trying to get another trophy. That would be nice. I'll see you guys in the last match. All right, going into the final match, trying to get another trophy. I think we have guaranteed we at least stay above sixty percent, which is again my goal. I will keep this. Um, yeah. So this is a good hand. I mean, we got our turn two quarter home guide, which we've had a lot of. Now we have a three drop too. So yeah, 60%, I mean, it doesn't sound amazing, but honest, that is actually a pretty good number. Um, pros, you know, granted it's at the pro tour, which has a higher level of competition than this, are usually satisfied if they can get 60%-ish. Uh, um, but Magic Online has a higher level of competition on average than like a local gaming store does. Because, you know, if you just think about it, the, the players are generally going to be more competitive, quicksand, because they wouldn't be invested in Magic Online if they weren't interested in being competitive. Um, okay, well, I'm thinking I just unmorph this. I could play Ruthless Ripper face down. I could also just attack with the morph. Let's just attack with the morph, and we'll play Ruthless Ripper face down. I could quicksand this, but it's not going to kill it, obviously, so... We will play Ruthless Ripper face down. Brainstorming. Quicksand is pretty sweet. Um, it's cool that they printed it here. I don't think I've played one myself yet. I think it should probably be eroded to be a desert, but you know, that's okay. Desert was eroded to be a desert, but not quicksand. But like a 60% win percentage is also where you sort of reach the point of, at least on uh, in this format, of going infinite basically, getting close. I mean, 66% or better, I guess, is like the exact number, but... Okay, Mana War, huh? Which do you bounce? Okay, I think we reveal it. I mean, they're going to see what it is anyway, so we're going to turn this face up for its morph cost and show them our Abomination just to get in for two. It also means they're going to give us the opportunity to do two more to them with our Ruthless Ripper, which I'm not going to mind. Um, okay, so we could flip this face up. We can't do anything else if we do that, um, but that might just be the best thing to do. It probably is. Let's do that. Make them have removal for this guy. We could play the Ripper face up, but it doesn't really seem worth it to me. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, well, we made them sacrifice a land. That's kind of worth it. I was thinking give minus two, minus one for some reason. Reading cards is hard. Um, okay, we're still in good shape. I mean, we invested six total mana in that guy for him to be quicksand, but... You know, it's whatever. Take two. Does our opponent have counter magic? Morph. Um, okay. So I could play Chupacabra. Especially because there's a decent chance that that's a will bender. But I think for now, I'm just going to play this face down and also leave up murder. This is what we've revealed that we have in our hand to them. They don't know we have either of these kill spells. Am 
my six mana stone rain. It also did two damage to them, so it's like a six, ma six mana molten rain, I guess. Yeah, so we'll take two. Such a good chance that that's a will bender. Maybe I should have just killed it when I had the chance since it completely screws up our attempts to do basically anything. Okay, so we're going to attack with our Ripper and then play the Phalanx. Get them to 14. Play the Phalanx. Another Grixis deck. I wonder what they're splashing for. Just tap all your mana. Don't leave up too blue. It's your problem. I think we're gonna have to fire off a murder at the end of their turn here to get rid of this pyre hound. And if Will Bender will point it back at our creature, but then we can Chupacabra the Pyre Hound at least. So we'll cast Murder on the Pyre Hound. Does it happen? Or does the will of my murder... Yeah, that's what we thought it was. Do they redirect it at my morph? They do. So we're going to do two more to them by revealing the same card we've already revealed to them. Take some of the 12, which is not too shabby. And that's nice. So then we're gonna play Chupacabra here and kill the Pyre Hound. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to get Will Bender out of the way. Um, playing our Chupacabra and killing it earlier would have been better because we would have kept our Ruthless Ripper in play at least, but you know, it's whatever. I have tried my hand at Pyrehound decks and been disappointed. And I recorded, I think I even recorded a couple of them. Um, but it can be good. I mean, it is scary. I'm scared to see it on my opponent's side of the board when they're playing what they're playing. I mean, it can get huge so quickly. Okay. Crows. That is a big flying threat. Um, well, I think we play Deadly Designs here. And we can set it up to crack on our opponent's next turn. On our next turn. Excuse me. Um, so that's good. After we take four to the face. Yeah, that's pretty good ahead of Deadly Designs because they can really dig deep into their deck and figure out what they want to do. In the aftermath of Deadly Designs. All right, so we'll put a plot counter. Put another plot counter. We can dump all of our mana into it to crack it this turn. I'm trying to decide if that's what I want to do. Or if I want to be a little more conservative. Uh, especially since they just drew a thousand cards. It's probably worth cracking this turn. Yeah, I think we do it. 
And we kill uh, Murder of Crows and Man of War, I think. Then we can attack with our Chupacabra. We have Ghost Ship and Abomination to try to close this game out. So we'll kill this and we'll kill this. Did this last time too, where for some reason it made me select twice, but. That will let them loot once. They discarded an higher shaman. God, that's makes me kind of scared for what they have in their hand. I mean, I guess, I don't know. There's There's got to be good stuff in their hand. Kindle, okay. If only we had a supernatural stamina there. We did get to do that once, uh, but we're only running one supernatural stamina. Maybe we should be running more with two chupacabras, but... Yeah, sifting ahead of our deadly designs was really annoying. Okay, well, we can block that all day with Ghost Ship, so that's nice. Um, I think I play the Abomination first, though. That they know we have in our hand. It can also attack pretty effectively right now, obviously enough. So we're going to go to 9. Ooh, double Shoreline Ranger. That's a little more of a problem for us. Okay. Well, Ghost Ship can actually help me kill one of them with Supernatural Stamina. Definitely attack with our Abomination since we can't block the guys in the sky anyway. And we'll bend our Chump Blocks. Um, yeah, I think we play Ghost Ship. And I might try to kill one of them. We have cast two Kindles, so a third Kindle was enough to kill our ghost ship, by the way. Um, I would probably use Supernatural Stamina to keep it alive, but... Right, their own ghost ship. We need another one of our flyers desperately right now. Wow, no attack. I'm actually pretty surprised by that. Okay. Well, that. Thank you, Deck, for listening to my pleas. Okay, so we'll attack with our abomination again. Drop them to seven. Play Murder of Crows. And in my turn. I guess leaving up two black again probably would have been better um, because I could regenerate and cast Supernatural Stamina. It would have been better. This lets me bluff more things, but that's probably not worth what I can act, you know, sacrificing what I can actually do, you know. Stop playing more things that can block, man. What's wrong with you? Okay. Well, Twisted Abomination can still attack. They can only regenerate one of their creatures, so I think that's what we do. Yeah, 
And we get to loot if one of their creatures dies, and I think one of them will. Oh, so I guess they can choose to regenerate. Yeah, that's that. That's true. <laughs> they can. They could double block too, and just choose to regenerate the one I decided to do combat damage to. So, okay. These guys bounce off each other. That one regenerates. But what do you do when you play another Twisted Abomination? That's the question. So, I think we play this land, even though it hurts our looting a little bit, just so we can leave up two swamps, two black. Gotta get through for that last seven damage somehow. Zada, that is not good. They probably have Retraction Helix. That's like the gross combo you can do with Zada in their color pair. Okay. So, they have five blockers. We can attack with five things. We can Supernatural Stamina one of them. But Retraction Helix is certainly something we need to keep in mind. Um... Though if they have that, we're just dead anyway, because they swing for lethal on their turn. So... I guess we just attack with both Abominations. If they choose to take one, we can Supernatural Stamina for the win. Assuming they don't have Retraction Helix. I think that's our best line, because of how their board's shaping up over there. They might choose to take him because they can, they think. So let's find out if they can. <laughs> Do they have an answer? If they have retraction, he looks we're dead either way. So doing, and we're not dead if it's just a regular bouncer removal spell. So I think it's worth uh, doing this. What? Why? Why would you not cast it on Zada and bounce my whole board? That is an interesting decision. If they cast it on Zada, it cast it on all of them, and then they can bounce my whole board and kill me. So I'm not sure about that decision. It you know it keeps them alive, but they could have set it up just to straight up kill me this turn. Now they can't do that. Okay, yeah, regenerate you annoying. Annoying ghost ship. And we have to use one swamp either way. We recast our Twisted Abomination. They have nothing in their hand now. And we'll hold on to this land in case we uh, get to loot. Because if they'd bounced my whole board, I could have only recast one creature, and these flyers... I guess I wouldn't have been completely dead, but it would have basically killed me. So I'm surprised they didn't do it. So they have enough mana now to regenerate Ghost Ship twice. So that's fun. So we're going to cast Accumulated Knowledge. I think it's our first one. Then we're going to cast Dusk Legion Zealot. Because I want to draw more cards. Okay, that Chupacabra could be helpful. It can get one of these ghost ships out of the way later. Um, there's not really any good reason for us to attack. Nope. So we won't. 
So if I attack with both abominations again and they regenerate both of these, I can kill one of them after that with Ravenous Chupacabra. That's the plan, I think. Oh god. <laughs> Do they have another will bender? What do you think? Brine Elemental would also be bad, but not as bad as Willbender. All right. Okay, so we will attack with both of these. If it is Willbender, they won't be able to use it this turn if they want to regenerate these guys. So that's how I'm looking at it. Um, and if it's Brine Elemental, it's not the end of the world. So if I manage to kill one of these, then my Abominations can finally start doing something to our opponent. They'll have to make ugly blocks, etc. So let's play this Chupacabra. I'm, I'm more concerned about getting rid of these than killing a Brine Elemental. Or, or a Willbender, actually, since they can't use its ability right now anyway. So we're going to get rid of one of those. Also get to loot, incidentally. Yeah, I do want to loot. Ooh. Now I think we also disfigure that morph. Just in case it is something really annoying like Brine Elemental. It was Willbender. That's pretty annoying, too. I could have saved it to help me kill um, a ghost ship. All right, so we'll discard this island, and then we'll play this swamp so we can regenerate abomina an abomination, at least. Okay, we thinned out their board. We got rid of a problematic Willbender. Will that be enough? Okay, we have another accumulated knowledge. I think we cast it. We now do officially get mi uh, milled by our own card draw before our opponent does now. So we'll attack with both abominations. What happens? We go to two. Okay, I guess we could have attacked with everything there, but with one card in their hand, seems a little risky. This turn, next turn, I think we do attack with everything. Drop some to two. We'll hold on to both of these for looting purposes. All right, with one card in their hand, I don't think they can keep themselves from dying. It would have to be an incredible card, like Retraction Helix. <laughs> Still, if they had used that helix, this game would be over the, the way they should have. They have four blockers and we can attack with a bunch, all our creatures but Dusk Legion Zealot are lethal. Oh, come on. <laughs> that might do enough to keep them alive for another turn. Should have attacked with everything last turn. Okay. So they have five blockers now. So yeah, they can block everything and then just take one from the Zealot. So that's probably not worth it. Neither are you. That's not when I want to draw a Mesmeric Fiend. Okay. Um, yep. I mean, I think we play it just because we want to be able to go a little wider, but probably not, actually. I think we just play our Abomination here. I don't think we play it because if they hold on to one card in their hand, we really want to know what it is, uh, whether they're bluffing or not. So, yeah, if we attacked here, one, two, three, four, five, six, they would take one. Um, and granted, they would lose some creatures along the way, but so would I. So I don't think it's worth it. Especially because they can block in such a way that none of these die and just swing for lethal. So...
I would get to loot. I mean, maybe that would make it worth it. At least it's a May effect. Okay, so this mesmeric fiend is going to say, what you got going on over there? If it's a kill spell, they have to play it now. And if it's a counter spell, they also have to play it now. <laughs> so uh, if it's anything else, I don't know. It wouldn't be a creature. They would have played a creature. So we have seven attackers. Only one of the creatures isn't lethal on its own. So if, if we get to see their hand here, uh, we can just attack with everything and kill them if they don't cast a kill spell in response. And that is a relevant if. Skeletonize. Okay. Well, <laughs> now they have a creature who can regenerate even more cheaply. God. Another ghost ship is nice. So now they can regenerate both of their creatures. Oh my god. Yeah, we just have to keep trying to go wide enough to be lethal. We could attack with our abominations here, but they can just regenerate both of their creatures. So I think we play ghost ship. And just end our turn. If I'd attacked on that turn, when they when we actually had lethal, we would have won. So it's gonna suck if we end up <laughs> losing because they have probably just had a land in their hand. Because the next turn they played a land in mana war, and they would have played mana war earlier. You would think if that's what it was. So again, they have six blockers. I have eight attackers, um, and even if they let in the two one damage creatures, it's lethal. Now. The fact that they can hold on to a card here does make things a little frightening. Um, I think I still go for it, though. Okay, everybody. What's their one card? If it's a kill spell, a bounce spell, any of those things, we're dead. Okay, we did it. <laughs> Whew, we played conservatively there, certainly. In the end, we managed to win, but we may have played too conservatively. Uh, nope, nothing good to sideboard. We have a bad sideboard, for sure. In blue, it's nice to have like the odd totally lost because it can actually deal with problem enchantments and artifacts. Um, like I used it, it might have been in my last draft video, I used it to bounce Ensnaring Bridge. I sighted in two because I saw an Ensnaring Bridge and then it helped win me the game. And, and that's, that's good because in blue-black, you're not going to get enchantment or artifact hate. Uh, so and that's as close as you can get. Um, so it would be nice to have one of those. Not that we really need one in this matchup. Although, you know, just bouncing one of those really annoying blockers would make a difference. So if we manage to get a trophy, that'll be two in a row, I think. It's pretty good. Did we have another Ruthless Ripper in our deck? I'm not sure if we played both. If we had one left in our deck, the best thing to do might actually have been to continue to play conservatively because they were at exactly two. So. <laughs> and they weren't swinging for lethal on us anytime soon. I don't know. Okay. No blue mana. Um, but I think it's still a keep. 
That was a slow GG. Um, okay, and we do drew blue, so that's awesome. We'll play black. There's When we're the ones on the draw, there's a decent chance we want to disfigure something on this turn. Um, not a great chance, but a decent one, yeah. So I don't think we play Deadly Designs yet. I think we hold off on that, and we plan on accumulated knowledging at the end of their turn. You don't want to play it when the board is just empty because your opponent might find a way to crack it in a way that is disad is isn't advantageous for you. Okay, so I think we play ruthless ripper face down in her turn. Does it eat a Kindle? No. Yeah, it's nice that they can sift. I mean, I'm not putting enough pressure on them that sifting on turn four. That's what's great about this format is you can sift on turn four in a lot of scenarios and just be like, I'm all good. <laughs> so, and that's what they did. I mean, we're going to hit them for two. It's not exactly punishing them. Um, we'll accumulate knowledge again. Okay. Um, we're going to attack for two. And then I think we play Mesmeric Fiend and see... What's going on over there in that seven card hand? Wheelbender, Skeleton Eyes, Shoreline Ranger, Shoreline Ranger, Kindle, Ghost Ship. I don't like any of these. I kind of feel like Wheelbender is our biggest problem, but they could always just skeletonize or Kindle or Mesmeric Fiend to get it back. So. I think I take Kindle. That way they don't have a cheap way of getting back the card. Yeah, so we'll take Kindle. That is not a not a good sight though. Good news is Deadly Designs trigger doesn't care about Willbender because Willbender only deals with things that have a single target. So that's good. Um they can play Willbender here and leave two up, but at least we can still crack in with our morph. They may just cast Skeletonize here on our morph uh, or on Mesmeric Fiend to get back their Kindle. Either one seems like a decent idea to me. Yeah, that's what they're gonna do. So we basically just, it's just a tempo hit, basically, playing with Merrick Fiend in this case. Which, you know, is worth something, but it's not a huge tempo hit. This can't regenerate right now, so we'll be able to attack, which is nice. Um, okay. We could also kill it with Disfigure, but that doesn't really seem worth it. Although, ahead of Willbender, maybe it is. We'll attack with our Morph. Dropping into 16, and we'll play our Phalanx. And end our turn. So face down, Wheelbender would be a pain, but our Phalanx can actually attack pretty reasonably into that nonsense, and so can this. Um, okay. So, I think I do turn this into an attacker. And we also attack with Ruthless Ripper. We know they have Kindle, but... All right, they're just gonna take five, that is cool with me. And then, I think we leave up mana for both Murder and Disfigure. Um, And maybe we find a window where they don't leave mana up for their Willbender. The only thing they can kill on our side with a Disfigure anyway is our Ruthless Ripper. So we may just do it anyway at the end of their turn. Because redirecting the Disfigure isn't going to hurt nearly as much as redirecting the Murder. Or our Chupacabra. Both of which we'd like to be able to do whenever the heck we want to. And not, you know, when my opponent doesn't have two mana available. Only. 
think they're gonna island cycle. Okay, they're gonna kindle. Um, so I think we do go ahead and turn this creature face up for its morph cost. We'll reveal this figure, drop them to nine. Let that kill it. And then we'll disfigure their will bender at the end of their turn. And well, now I can't kill any of my creatures, so. Now we'll just do it now. They can redirect it so it doesn't kill their creature. That's all it will accomplish here. So I'll take one if they pay two mana here, basically, instead of two, and nothing else will happen, really. Yeah, so they just let it die, which is great news for us, <laughs> since we have Murder and Chupacabra in our hand right now. Okay, I think we do this again, and then play a face-down Mystic. We could have just cast the Mystic face up, like that was potentially, but I think getting in more damage, you know, or making them cast a Kindle at least is a little bit better. So we'll cast this Mystic face down. Shoot, might have to swamp cycle one of these abominations so that we can draw um, the swamp to cast our other abomination. <laughs> Still don't want to cast deadly designs. Like, it's only worth playing once your opponent sort of has a built up board. Okay. Well, we can murder that. I think we'd probably play our Chupacabra. Ooh, now we really do. Um, yeah, so we're going to go. Ooh, yeah, I guess it's better to do it this way. We're gonna play Chupacabra, kill Shoreline Ranger, and attack with our morph. Seven, that's a good number. still have ghost ship in their hand um but they can't play it and regenerate it so i think they've been avoiding it but i kind of feel like they have to cast it no oh, pyre hound okay interesting so Do we just murder the Pyre Hound and attack with both of these? I think we probably do. All right. Attack with both of these and then also play Return Phalanx. All right, the chump block has finally happened. They go to five, we got rid of that annoying skeleton. We play phalanx. So our opponent has so little time that even if we do go to game three, which looks kind of unlikely right now, uh, we win. So that's pretty nice. <laughs> Chances are, because he's not gonna have the time. We don't have a lot either. I mean, this was a long match, but we have more than they do by a good three minutes. We don't have supernatural stamina up here, which could end up being a problem. Okay, murder of crows. So I think we just win. Um, yeah, and we make this. And we'll just attack with all of them. I 
You could also just cast Supernatural Stamina. So, I think that does it. Yep, 3-0 and another trophy. So, definitely staying above our 60% win percentage. Maybe we can push it to 65-ish. So, thanks for watching. I'll be back on Thursday with another draft video. We're back to only two draft videos a week. You know, I, my time where I had all that nice free time is unfortunately over and now I just have a normal amount of free time. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next draft video.